Hey, what's up garden friends? Jeff here at Tropical Plant Party. How's everybody doing? I hope you're good. I am great. Beautiful day. I'm getting ready to do a repot. Thought I'd go ahead and film it. White Bird of Paradise is an extremely popular house plant. You can see this one, it's really, it's overdue for repotting. Winter's just come to an end a few weeks ago and moving into the growing season here <laughs> and I just, I didn't want to repot it in the fall times. So you know when it's time to repot one of these big bird of paradise plants when they start to explode out of the bottom of their pot. That's usually a pretty good indicator. There are a few different ways to tell when it's time to go ahead and do a repot or an up pot with a bird of paradise, the white bird of paradise and the orange ones. If you start to see roots coming out the top or the bottom of the pot or they're exploding out the side of the pot, any of those things, any combination of them, that's usually a pretty good indicator that it's time to go ahead and bump them up into a new pot. These are plants that actually do like to be somewhat pot bound. That only goes to an extent, right? Eventually it's like, okay, that's enough. When it gets really hard to keep the plant hydrated and keep it looking nice, then it's time. There we go. The sun's a little harsh this morning. Adjusting the light as I go on the camera so if things get kind of weird and funky back and forth that's why. I have two different size pots here. One of them right here on the right just in front of the plant. This pot is going to make it so that there's just about a two inch difference between the root mass of the plant and any fresh soil which is fine. That's generally the direction you want to go with house plants or really any plant. You don't want too much excess soil around the original root ball because then the moisture is going to move away from the roots. They need the water. Now over here I have a pot that's much larger and uh, the only reason I would bump it up into something this much bigger is because, well, it's an aggressive plant. One thing I think we all know about the white bird of paradise is they have very aggressive roots. I mean, you can, you see? Very aggressive roots. So it'll fill this out within a single growing season and then I'll be able to hopefully go uh, about a year and a half to two years between the repots instead of having to repot them every single year. So what I've done here is I've gone ahead, I've put some packing peanuts in the bottom of these pots. I never throw away packing peanuts when they come in the mail. They always come in nifty for having a filler in the bottom, really just because this has some really, really big holes in the bottom and all kind of along the edges of the sides, which is fantastic. These need really good drainage but I don't want soil flushing out everywhere at the same time. I don't always put something in the bottom of my pots for drainage, but in this sort of situation, it just makes sense, like I said, because these will be inside part of the year. I don't want dirt washing out all over the place. That would just be a mess. So the packing peanuts are going to be nifty for that. And then to get it started, I'm just going to take a box cutter and start cutting the pot off of there. When the plants get to a point that the roots are starting to come out the bottom and shoot out the sides, it's usually easier, I find, just to use those box cutters. Cut the pot away and I just try my best to make sure I'm not pushing down too hard so that I'm going to do the least amount of damage to the roots. But if something's really pot bound, cutting up some roots isn't that big of a deal. But with something like a bird of paradise that likes to be pot bound, it's not really necessary to go in and tear the roots up too much. And I'm actually surprised looking at this that there isn't more swirling on the bottom of this plant. I'm using a potting mix here that's just a blend of all-purpose potting mix with a good amount of perlite, a whole bunch of sand. I actually could easily have doubled the amount of sand that's in here, but I'm a little bit low and I don't want to go out and get any right now. So uh, this will do. It's okay. The main thing is just that it is a rich soil that drains quickly and won't hold on to moisture for too terribly long. I want it to hold just ever so slightly when I give it a pinch. It's holding a little bit more than it normally would because I have pre-moistened this. It's a little bit damp right now, but it's just a nice rich blend that's going to drain very very well. A nice sharp drainage so when the water hits this it moves right through it. I mean within a few seconds at least. You don't want it to be puddly or anything like that. I'm going to want to make sure that when I water the plant that it stays moist for a few days. No more than probably four. That would be too long indoors. Outside it's going to dry much more quickly than in the house. Since this is a larger plant the way I like to go ahead and make sure that I'm getting my depth proper as far as my potting soil that's in here. I've already put a little bit of soil in there. What I'll do is I'll take my shovel and put that right up against the edge and line it up. And then I can look at the shovel and say hey how big was that root ball and it was pretty much the same size as the actual spade on this, the actual shovel. I'm going to want my planting depth to be right around there. Man, the lighting's terrible this morning. I'm going to put a little bit more in here just so that there's some room to settle. So if it's a little bit high, it can settle down a little bit lower. 
And I'm just gonna drop this in there. And this is when I'll take my hand and just very lightly loosen up that root mass a little bit. Like I said, this is a plant that kind of doesn't mind being pot bound. So if their roots become kind of wrapped, it's not the end of the world, but you don't want it to go too far. And it, just loosening it up just a little bit is all it's going to take. Just that light touch. That's all it needs to go ahead and get the roots to start to spread out around the rest of the pot. Just gonna fill in around all the edges, lightly pull the plant in one direction and then in the other, and pat the soil down gently. It doesn't need to be too compacted. And then of course, water it in. The soil's already pre-moistened, but I wanna make sure that the water actually does go through, flush out any bubbles, anything like that, and just get things settled in nicely. Yeah, now that I have it repotted, you can see, I mean, the poor thing, it really needed it. With it being so constricted and it's old pot it just wasn't able to get all the nutrients that it actually needed to produce nice healthy lush growth hence why it looks like this that's yeah, not good it was just basically growing it hydroponically when you get to a point where it's relying on fertilizer to get any nutrients at all because the roots have pushed all the soil out of the pots that's it's time to repot at that point which for me was a good I'd say eight months ago at least. So here we are, that's done. I will keep this in a spot that doesn't get bright intense light just for a few weeks, just until it's kind of established itself into its new container. I'll probably, I'd say it maybe like four hours or so of direct morning sun and then filtered light throughout the rest of the day. And I'm gonna keep it in a spot like that for probably a good six weeks, something like that. It's just because the plant's going to need some time to start pushing its roots out into this new pot to be able to take up water and nutrient and everything. If I put it right out into full sun, then you'll see how these leaves curl up here. They're curling there, they're curling over here. It's just the plant's defense mechanism against getting too much sunlight. They go ahead and crimp those leaves up so that they can get through a little bit longer. It can be due to other things. There are a lot of reasons that plants will fold their foliage up, but in this case, that's what was going on up there. I couldn't keep it hydrated while it was in full sun. So now what I'm going to do, in addition to just tucking it back into a part sun, part shade location, I'm also going to wait on removing these little dead leaf bases. That's only because I've already done a lot to the plant, so I at least wanna make sure it gets a few days to rehydrate itself. I watered it like an hour before filming this video, but you could see that root ball was still bone dry because there's nothing else in that pot to help hold in any moisture. So I wanna go ahead and give it a little bit of time, but these leaf bases, these brown pieces right here, those will just pull right off. Sometimes you have to pull kind of hard. You don't wanna to go too hard with it. You don't wanna just be tugging and tearing at the plant too much. That could really stress it out. So if any of them don't want to just pull right out, like you can see this one right here, it's just gonna, yeah. I mean, that one was ready to go. That'll pull right off. May not be the most attractive thing to have to look at. I can take a pair of scissors and cut them down further. I'll probably do that. But for now, I do want to give the plant just a chance to kind of rest and adjust to the trauma of being ripped out of its old pot. And then the, there are a few little cuts from the blade and transitioning into a potting mix that it hasn't had in a very long time because that pot was pretty much, its previous pot was mostly just roots, which is okay-ish for a bird of paradise. They do like for their roots to be somewhat confined, but it is harder to keep them looking nice when you don't have any soil in the pot. Or I mean, you, you gotta have something down in there to help hold in some moisture, something otherwise just be watering them constantly, which I have been, fertilizing them constantly, which I have been. And the growth that comes out of them is usually pretty wonky and weak and it's just not desirable. Having them in a larger container like this is going to promote growth that comes out much more stiff and full and just lush overall. If I want the growth to be nice and stout, then I will make sure to put this in a full sun location. And if I am okay with the foliage being a little bit more stretched out, like you can see that leaf all the way up there, yet the plants all the way down there, that's pretty stretched out. And that's only because I've just moved this outside. And when it was inside, I was giving as much light as I could, but it still was just not quite enough to keep the growth nice and stout. So it stretched a little bit, but not to a point where it's harmful for the plant. I'd show more of the foliage, but everything's so backlit, it's just kind of hard to look at it. Which is fine, because that's pretty much all there is to this. Once it establishes itself into this pot, like, I'm gonna say 
six to eight weeks, I will start fertilizing with an all-purpose fertilizer probably every other week during the growing season. And then about six weeks before the first frost, I'm going to stop so that the plant has a chance to kind of calm down, shut itself down, and get ready to be moved into the house. I will not be fertilizing it because the temperatures are much cooler and they're not really in a state of active growth. They'll just kind of sit still. And as this is, it probably will sit still for a while. I probably won't, like there's a spear that was coming out, looked like it was getting ready to come out of the middle there. Uh, you can't really see it here. Where'd it go? There it is. There's a spear up there. That may not do much of anything for a while because like I said, it, probably going to want to adjust to being in a larger container with fresh soil and everything. Just needs to recover. And once it gets through that, it'll start flushing out with new growth. Chances are by July to August, this is going to look like a completely different plant. They really do respond well to being repotted and getting some fresh soil. And the only other thing I wanted to touch on is potting soil. And that's only because there's a lot of variation between what type of potting mix you should use. Bird of Paradise, White Bird of Paradise, they are a pretty versatile plant. They're pretty tough they can grow in a pretty wide range of mixes now in a pot the main thing is just that it drains well that's the more universal thing but if you live someplace with a really dry climate then using a potting mix like i just did right here where the soil is going to hold on to moisture for a few days that's a really good way to go with these plants but they can take even more arid conditions these leaf bases that are on here are kind of succulent they're full of water and those roots, you saw them before when I pulled this out of the pot, they're very large and they have water reserves in them as well. So it is a plant that can go in a more arid climate. If you do live someplace that's really dry, then making sure the mixture that you use holds on to moisture for a few days is a good way to go. If you live someplace where it's really humid, then having something that drains extra fast and uh, dries out within a day or so is fine. There's nothing wrong with that because the humidity is going to help keep the plant a little bit more hydrated. You don't have to worry about like the browning leaf edges or anything like that that people in dry climates or indoors have to worry about. Just variances between indoors and outdoors and climates. So I wanted to make sure to mention that. Anyways, when these leaf spears that are in here, the spear being this piece right here in front of my finger, just to the left of it, once those open up and I start to see growth of a new one down inside there, inside the base there of the plant, that's when I'll know, okay, you've adjusted, you're all right with this new setup here. I'm gonna go ahead and start moving the plant back into more sun. Cause I do prefer these plants with a little bit more of a stout growth over a stretched growth. So that's what I will be doing there. I will be keeping it in full sun. I mean, it'll get some afternoon shade, but not a lot. Nice to see you. Just start to come over, put your butt in the shot. That's nice of you. They're heavy feeders. So again, once I start to see that new growth push out from up there where I was just showing you, that's going to be an indicator of when it's time to go ahead and resume fertilizing on a normal schedule as well. I think that's everything my dog's butt and the base of the plant hope everybody's doing well comment down below tips tricks suggestions always appreciated i'll be doing some things with this plant and another one in the vlog that comes out after this video as far as like where i place it and those sorts of things and there will be updates in the garden tours so check those out if you want to see how the plant adjusts and everything probably won't there won't be much to show for it until probably july something like that i still think chances are within the next month or so it should start flushing out with new growth man this lighting is terrible today and if you like the video hit that like button subscribe as well and hit that notification bell that way you know when new videos come out all my social media is linked down below i use instagram more than anything else and of course as always and most importantly everybody keep on growing bye bye